Hey guys, Paul here at Rapids, and today I'm going to show you how we take this VDD24 Volition Kegerator and retrofit it for a cold brew coffee dispenser. So what's going to happen when you order this, we, we sell it in a complete kit, you're going to receive this unit, the refrigeration unit, uh, crated, okay? So when this arrives by truck, what you want to do first is take off all of the seal that's on it and the cardboard and, and inspect it, the exterior of it for any damage before you let that truck driver leave. Uh, if this thing looks good, you can sign off on it and send him on his way. You're also going to be receiving a box, okay? And that box is going to contain the components that we use to take this refrigeration unit and retrofit it into a cold brew coffee dispenser. It goes like this. Okay, what we're going to find is inside the box itself right away, there's going to be some of the original packaging for this uh, dispenser. And so we're going to have, you know, our instruction sheet right here. This is going to be the glass rail right here, the key set up there. This hose will end up going up into the tower and this box back there. That box is going to contain a beer tower with the beer faucet. What you're going to want to do is take that thing out and just set it aside. Mark on it with a Sharpie for beer. We can't use the components that come in that bonus beer tower because they are not made out of all stainless steel. And that's something we need if we're going to be dispensing cold brew coffee. It has a different pH balance, different acidity level. And so we got to make sure that everything is all stainless steel. So if you ever decide that, you know, cold brew coffee is not your thing or you want to switch it up in the winter, uh, you have a beer tower as a bonus that you can put on. But for our purposes, we're just going to take that thing and set it aside for another day. Okay, next step on this is going to be, we're going to remove the shipping screws that were set in here. Uh, when it came crated, that just hold this top plate down. And then we're gonna actually put the glass rail on. Uh, the tools that we need, all, all you really need for this process at this point is just a Phillips head screwdriver. So we're just gonna go ahead and unscrew these shipping screws. You'll notice that on the top of this, there's a protective plastic film that covers it that's going to help uh, prevent us from accidentally scratching it during assembly. The cool thing about this clear film back here is that, you know, if you don't, if you don't scratch it up too much during assembly, you can leave it on. That's just another extra layer of protection. Well, obviously on the drip tray here, it's got a, a, a white plastic covering on it. That one we're going to want to remove to, to pretty it up once we put this thing into production. But this clear stuff, you know, you can leave that right on. Okay, so this is the packaging that has a glass rail on it. This would have been taped down on the bottom of the base of the unit when you took it out of its crate. So there's a bunch of tape on here and plastic uh, bubble wrap. So we're going to want to get in here to get the actual pieces of the chair, or the, excuse me, the glass rail out. Okay, now the way these posts work is we're going to screw them physically onto these little um, set bolts right there. These are threaded Phillips head too. So if you need to adjust these to, so when they tighten down, they, they line up pro properly. That's just a Phillips head on the top for that process. Little caps there, we're gonna loosen that back up so we can fit the bars through there. So just loosen that up a little bit, spin these on. All right, I'm gonna install the final post here. And you can use actually a screwdriver like this to kind of tighten them to get them straight. And then for the rest of the glass rail, then all you got to do is take this piece and slide it through one and then through the other side when you get down there. And then get it spaced the way you want it and just tighten these right back down. All right, that's glass rail. Okay guys, now that we have the glass rail set up, the next step is going to be let's go ahead and put the tower on top of this unit. Now, depending on the kit that you got, you're, you're going to have a, a, a tower that either has, you know, one shank and faucet assembly um, that's going to go on it, or dual if you got two poles. So, remember, we have three different kits. There's the, the classic cold brew kit, which is going to have the stainless steel tower with a single regular faucet on it. The nitro kit, which has the same single faucet tower, but the faucet we switch out for an actual stout faucet, which is going to help get that creamy head on it. And then the, the second tower configuration is one that's a dual pole. So it has two shanks on it and allows for one of each of those faucets. So depending on what kit you got, uh, what pulls out of the box next might look a little bit different. What we're going to be putting on this one is just a regular single pole unit. Okay guys, so now we got the o-ring and the screws out and we're ready to assemble the tower. But hey, do you remember those shipping screws that we took out originally? I like to use those better than the ones that come supplied with the tower because these are drilled to fit 
the, the they're pre-tapped holes that are already in this tower. So I'm going to go ahead and take those that came with the beer tower and just set those aside. And you want to place the O-ring over the opening here. Why is the O-ring important? Well, this is a foamed in place polyurethane insulated cabinet, right? And if we look at the tower, you can actually see that the tower itself has insulation in it as well. This O-ring is going to maintain the seal so you don't lose any cold air. So you can drop your product line down through the O-ring and through the hole. And when you align the tower itself, make sure that you have it with the shank fa facing forward because obviously that's where you're going to pull it. And then you just line it up and you can begin to screw back in the tower. Now this is a single product tower, remember? So uh, it looks like this. If you have the dual tower, uh, uh, dual pull tower, it's gonna look a little differently. It has a shank that comes out each kind of at an angle, but even with the faucets attached, it's going to cover the drip tray just fine. So yeah, so now we got tower in place, we're just gonna screw it back down. Okay guys, the next step is going to be putting the faucet on the tower. Now if you got a classic cold brew rig, you're going to have a standard faucet, okay? If you got the nitro kit, then you're going to be getting one of these stout faucets. And if you got a dual pull, obviously you're going to get one of each. So to put these on, you know, we're going to need the faucet itself and a faucet wrench, okay? So if you don't see a faucet wrench in the, in the big box that you receive, this might be where you have to go back into that beer tower box to, to hunt out your, your faucet wrench, okay? So I got my wrench and I got my faucet. To attach the faucet to the shank, it's actually reverse threaded, okay? So instead of righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, once we line it up where we want it, you're actually going to go lefty-tighty, okay? And then on the, the faucet wrench, they differ a little bit in appearance, but there's a little notch there and there's some holes on the top. So what you do is you line up the notch and then... That's when you snug it in. If you don't get this snug though, uh, you could get some spray out the seal, so make sure you get that snugged in there. And then also, uh, you're going to look for a faucet knob. The faucet knob may be in either one of those boxes, but this just screws right down on the top of the faucet just like so. Um, this is a, a standard quarter by 20 um, bolt going up there, so if you had some kind of promotional um, faucet knob, you could stick that on there too. But yeah, that's it. So now we're, um, we're set up on the faucet side. Okay, next step is to attach the cooling hose. So we have this cooling hose taped to the bottom. And what happens is cold air comes right out of the uh, refrigeration unit right here, comes through this hose, okay? And we wanna put this into the top of the tower. The idea is the coldest air coming off the evaporator is going to be uh, coming out right here at the faucet level. So it makes sure that everything is cold. And to do that, there's a little hook here, and that hook wants to hook onto the top of the tower. I'm gonna to show you a trick. When you took apart this thing from the crate, I bet you there is a piece of strapping similar to this one. And I found this is the easiest way to get this thing up the tower. What I do is on the very top of the tower, you can take this cap off, right? And then there's this little piece of insulation on the top that comes out too. But what you can do is take your strapping and actually feed that down through the top of the tower until it comes out into the cavity of the refrigeration unit. Take that little hook and hook it onto that strap. And then you can pull that thing right up to the very top of the tower. So once you got the top of the tower, unhook it from the strapping, and then you can attach it to the elbow on the back of the shank or onto the side of the insulation. Put your insulation back on the top, put your cap back on, cold air going right to the top now. Okay guys, we're almost there. The next part is gonna be hooking it up to your keg. So what we have here from the product line is there is attached to it a hex nut um, uh, on a tailpiece. And if you were serving your coffee out of a, a half a barrel keg or a slim quarter barrel keg or a sixth barrel keg, you know, the bigger ones, this hex head then would fit directly on top of your keg coupler uh, and then attach to that keg. 
Now, a lot of folks, though, that are doing cold brew coffee, they, they buy their coffee in a Cornelius-style keg, which are a little bit smaller. So this is an example of a two-and-a-half-gallon Cornelius-style keg, and they also make them uh, popularly in a five-gallon Cornelius keg. These use a different way to attach. They use quick disconnects. So if you are getting your coffee or brewing your own and using these Cornelius kegs sold separately, um, you're going to want to switch out the hex head product line to a quick release head. And so if you go back into that box you received, you'll see that we, we have supplied those quick disconnects for you. They come in two colors so you can differentiate what's in and what's out. And so we're going to grab the product out one. And what you would do if you're using the style is, you know, you'd come in here and just cut this product line. You know, maybe you're out about there or so. And then you'll also have supplied in that box a bunch of hose clamps. And so slide the hose clamp on after you've snipped this thing. And then, you know, if you get it warm or wet with some warm water, that'll help it slip over the barbs on this disconnect a little bit easier too. So once you got the barb inside there onto the hose line, then you'll move that hose clamp back down and cinch it. We're just gonna pretend I did that, okay? And so now that you have that line hooked up, you'd find the out connection on your Cornelius keg and you go ahead and just, it just pops right on there to lock in. And that's going to have you hooked up then to the faucet. Okay guys, we're almost done. So now we have the keg connected with the product line up to the faucet. Next step is pressurization. We got to be able to push that coffee from the keg out the faucet. And we do that with some of the more goodies that came in that box. First off, you're going to find a 22 cubic foot aluminum uh, nitrogen tank okay this this comes shipped empty so you got to take it to your local gas company and ask for a hundred percent food grade nitrogen we can't use co2 to pressurize these systems and we can't even use a blended gas which is part co2 and part nitrogen because that's going to make that coffee turn foul really quickly hundred percent food grade nitrogen also inside that box of goodies you're going to find a braided high pressure air line gas line and you're going to find a regulator. And the regulator we have here is a single line, single product regulator because we only have one product uh, in this kit. If you got the two pull kit, which is classic cold brew and nitro, you're going to get a two line regulator that has an extra gauge on it so you can monitor both those levels. So once you have your regulator, the first step is going to be attach the line to that regulator. Take one of your hose clamps, put that up there stick it over the barb. Now, if you have difficulty getting it over the barb, the trick is you can, uh, remember, warm water. Soak that in warm water. And then once you get the hose clamp situated, you're gonna tighten that thing down. Now, these hose clamps that are supplied in our kits, they are a flathead screwdriver. So that's when you have to grab your other screwdriver. Okay, and then the other part of it is gonna be, you know, take your washer, stick it over the hose, and then stick it over the quick disconnect that's going to attach to the keg. Screw that down tight. You're going to want to tighten these pretty good. And then after you've attached the unit, uh, I highly recommend that once you uh, pressurize the system that you go over these, you know, go over all these with, the, with some soapy water to see if there's any leaks, uh, if you need to tighten them a little bit more. Okay, so now I got my quick disconnect attached uh, to the regulator and to the um, to the regulator and to the quick disconnect. I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the nitrogen cylinder. My cylinder is empty, and I'm just going to hand tighten this. But obviously, a big wrench would secure this down. But for demonstrative purposes, um, here's where we're at. So this is gonna supply the gas to pressurize the system. Okay guys, bringing it all together then. So, so now we have our nitrogen hooked up to our quick disconnect. We're gonna take this and can actually put that right back inside the unit. And then the quick disconnect is going to attach to the corny keg on the input, right? Same way, just press and push it down. So now we are able to add pressure to the system. And the way to do that will be open up the valve on your tank. There is a shutoff valve right here as well, so you're gonna want that open. And then by using this screw right here, by turning that, you can set your desired uh, serving uh, PSI or pressure. If you're serving just traditional classic cold brew coffee, that, that's it, you're done. You can start pouring. Uh, in this situation though, since we're doing nitro, there is one different change, okay? So 
What's different with Nitro is on these corny kegs, we sell an accessory lid that's gonna help charge the nitrogen keg, okay? So in that instance, we wouldn't connect it to this quick disconnect. Instead, we would take the traditional lid off the coffee. And we have these special lids. And this lid has attached to it a hose, right? And that hose feeds into a 0.5 micron diffusion stone. And then on the very top or the other opposite end of that is another uh, input. So if we put this lid on instead, that hose carries that diffusion stone down to the bottom of the keg. And then instead we would hook our input from our nitrogen onto that quick disconnect. So now when we pressurize the system, it's going to push that nitrogen through that hose to the bottom of the keg, fits a two and a half gallon or a five gallon keg. And then that nitrogen is going to diffuse out of that diffusion stone, making tiny little bubbles. And so whenever that is opened up, it's going to create more of those bubbles. So you're going to have a more consistent foam coming out of your faucet. To charge it the first time when you turn on the pressure, you want to increase your pressure to your serving pressure. You know, about five PSI every four minutes, three to five minutes, somewhere in there until you get up to what you want to serve to. Around here, that tends to be about 30, 35 PSI, might go as high as 40. And all that kind of depends on your success level, given your altitude and the amount of pressure that you have there. So a little bit of that's trial and error, but you want to kind of creep up to that serving temperature, uh, excuse me, that serving uh, uh, pressure. So yeah, so that would be it for nitro. Then you can tuck your keg in there. So you got plenty of room for backup kegs. And that's it. Well, that's how these things go together, folks. But if you have any other questions about cold brew coffee dispensing, the kegerators we carry, the kits that we have, the parts that you might need for your setup, feel free to give us a buzz here at the shop or jump on our online chat. You know, at Rapids, we've been in the dispensing part of food service since 1936.